Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and it's time for another reef tank update on the 210 gallon reef. It's been a little while since we took a look at this tank, but it's time to kind of do the good, the bad, and the ugly thing. But before we do that, I want to talk about Weekend at the Wholesaler. That is where I open up my business, Mile High Reefers, to you. I do this twice a month so that you can come buy coral from me. It's located in Centennial, Colorado. All the information is listed down in the description below. But basically, I take over Hammerhead Corals, but it's no longer Hammerhead Corals. It's Mile High Reefers. It's my business. I sell coral out of it. So last week I did this and it turned out great. I got a pretty good turnout considering I gave no real advance notice or anything like that, but everything went great. And thank you to everybody who came out. This week at Weekend at the Wholesaler, I'm going to be giving away PNS ProBio. These little eight ounce bottles. PNS ProBio is a great product. This is your purple non-sulfur bacteria. It's great for denitrification. You can use it fresh water, salt water. It's got so many uses. My favorite use for it, is as a coral food. I feed this to my tank every day. So if you want some, I've got 10 eight ounce bottles that I'll be giving away to the first 10 people who spend $25 or more. So if you like cool coral and you want a free bottle of PNS Pro Bio, come out to Weekend at the Wholesaler. Now, enough advertisements for my own personal business. Let's dive in to the 210 gallon reef. Overall, I'd say the 210 gallon reef is looking pretty darn good. We've made a ton of improvements. If you, lost, if you watched my last video where I did the 24 gallon reef update, you might have noticed that I had hernia surgery. Yes, it kind of slowed me down from doing any real work to either tank. So I'm finally getting feeling good enough I've been able to come in here and start cleaning and scrubbing algae again and you know do all the little easy things to start getting things really up in shape and where they need to be. So I think we're seeing some pretty good gains now. But let's start with the fish. Right now fish are all doing fantastic. Everybody's happy, healthy, Really, I've had no fish problems in here whatsoever. It's been great. One of the bigger changes of this tank has been with the lighting. My AC has been down because I had that hernia surgery. And the, of course, the AC has been out since last September. It needs some work, but my hernia surgery cost me a small fortune. So not running AC has meant I haven't been running my halides. But as you can see, halides are on today because I've got about a week of low temp weather, like 75 to 90 degrees, which means I can run my halides again, which makes me super excited. I'm not sure how this is going to affect coral long term. Not an ideal way to do it, but it's what I'm working with because of budgetary constraints. I spent six grand out of pocket on a surgery. I don't have the money to fix everything. It is what it is, but the coral, they don't seem to mind. Last time we looked at this tank, the biggest problem I was having was with algae. And there's still quite a bit in here, as I am sure you can see. But things are much, much improved. Where this rock just used to be completely covered in algae, I've been able to scrub it get things clean, get things looking better. And instead of just being a field of algae, I've got patches of algae. I know it still looks terrible, but things are going in the right direction. It's getting better. The worst side is of course on this side of the tank. And really it's part of it's because I can't get in here to work. Part of it's because I can't get in here to scrub, but it's also the side of the tank where I took the big kaleidoscope leather off this section had been bare forever so once you open up a section first thing that wants to colonize is algae so this got hit the worst and of course the biggest problem i'm struggling with is 
with all of the euphelia. The euphelia all have the algae growing deep in there. It's hard to get in there and scrub because every time I do that, it wants to knock the coral off. So we're struggling with that. But from an algae perspective, everything is looking much better. That's not to say we're out of the woods or we're done, but it's better. We still have a lot. And now that the algae is going, I'm finding Aptasia everywhere. Of course I am. It hid in the algae, nothing was getting to it, eating it. So here we are. Downstairs is a similar story. So I'm still struggling with algae, but I've been able to clean it all, get it looking much better. A couple pieces of Aptasia in here. But compared to where I was, this is looking great. Everything is doing so much better. And I've even got some long tentacle frags, which I plan to share with you guys, the public. Probably within the next month or so, those will be a weekend at the wholesale giveaway. Yeah, I'm gonna start giving all of this coral away. In fact, almost everything in this tank, I think I'm gonna give away. I don't need it. So let's give it to you guys. You guys probably want it. So follow me on Facebook. Keep up with Weekend at the Wholesaler because I've got tons of coral I'm gonna give away. This tank down here, this one, it's a straight up dumpster fire. It's got bubble algae and regular algae and I haven't attacked it yet and it needs everything. This is its own massive project. But things are going in the right direction and working. The little gravity, Water auto top off has been working perfectly, flawlessly. Everything is exactly kind of how I want down here. I mean, it looks kind of ugly. It all could use a nice tidying and cleaning. But you know, I was down for the better part of a month for this surgery and I'm just getting better. So it, to have this tank looking this good, I know, I know. It's gonna be a year you're probably like, oh, your tank looks like crap, Scott. It's true. But compared to where I was, the problems I was having, the health issues, like, I'm really happy like this. This is great. This is what I want. It's all about going in the right direction. So since the last update, I've gotten some new coral. So let's start with that. My first new coral is this Red Dragon Acro. It's kind of one of those bottle brush ones. And I'm loving it. I traded this one from Jake Adams yesterday. So maybe it's got 12 hours in the tank. I hope this one does well for me because it's a really cool acro. Next is this purple Milka Stylo. What's cool about this is it's one of two corals in the hobby from the Red Sea. And yeah, this is one that came from Jake as well. Also from Jake, I got this blue polyp purple Digi, these are sweet. You'll see several pieces in the tank as we do the update, but this is a really cool coral. Last is of course the Acantho that maybe you saw on the weekend at the wholesaler video. He was just big and opened about 10 minutes ago. Now he's all pulled in and angry. Don't ask me what happened. Really cool coral. It's not real bright but when he's actually opened up and you can kind of see the way he is, he's purple with gold lines and these pink specks in him. I absolutely love him, even if he's not the most neon thing in the world. Next, as long as we're talking about problem children in Acanthophilia and Cyanarena, let's talk about these two. You can see this Acantho, he's just big and fat and open and loving life. Problem is, is I've got a curtain right here that when it opens up, oh my God, it lets a ton of light in. Well, I had my other Acantho over here and it started bleaching out. I moved this guy way back here to get him in the shade. This big one hasn't really had a problem with it yet. And of course my little Indo Acanthophilia, it started to bleach for the same reasons. It was on the other side of the tank. So I've moved it. It's down below the big candy cane, almost in the shade. Honestly, at this point, the biggest problem I'm having with Cynarinas and Acanthophilias is finding places to put them in the tank where there's less light. Like I am bleaching them because there's too much light. It's crazy, these guys don't much love it. And of course you can see this red one, it's so happy, it's opened up into the fox and we're gonna have to move those. But I thought I should film first. 
Next up, let's talk about the torches. These three, doing fantastic. If anything, this green one's getting so big, I need to move the hammer right above it. Everything's happy, healthy, and doing great. The you know, gold, holy grail, amazing thing is doing good, but it used to have four heads. Now it's down to two. What happened is, is I originally got it. It was two heads split into four, then two heads brown jelly. So fingers crossed these two heads stay healthy. I love this coral and I want it to do good. The rest of my Euphelia garden is doing really well. I mean, everything's pretty fat, healthy, and looking the way I want it. I mean, it's just all doing great, except for one needle coral, and it's not doing bad, but it's this gold hammer right here. Now, this is kind of a green gold. It's still gold. To the eye, it looks gold, but on the camera, it has kind of a green tinge. And when you look at these golds, they almost seem to come in a range between green gold to straight up gold to orange. And this is more on the green gold side, but it's a nice one. But as you can see, it's just packed in with the frogs around it. And it really needs a place where I can get it so it can be open and free to grow. So I got to find a new place for it. So as soon as we move a few coral around and open up a hole, we'll be doing it. I'm kind of thinking right where this green bubble is and we'll move the green bubble, but I got a lot to think about. As far as my leathers and toadstools go, they're just thriving. Everything is doing so good. They're so ha happy, so healthy. Changes in temperature, water quality, tanks crashing. They just, they don't care. Like they do so good. And since we're on this side of the tank, let's check out this big clam. He's just fat and happy. I mean, it's even getting covered by the leather right there and it just doesn't seem to matter. The goal is to frag this guy back, but I'm kind of waiting for my frag tanks to really be in a position to do it, right? Because I need to make frags that aren't covered in algae so I can give them away, right? Like I don't have any plans to sell any of this, but I do need to cut a bunch of coral, free up some space and make some room. My big green bubble continues to thrive and do well. Halides are on today and it just seems like he's extra happy about that. This tank has been kind of running hot, so I haven't been able to run the halides, so it's nice to have them on. And I can just see the corals perking up with the halides. They love the extra par. My little SPS section is doing really well. We have had a few challenges though. We had a little bit of STN happen right here. Actually, this section of coral is all dead in STN. Reason I think that happened is I am zero nitrates, zero phosphates, and that's causing me a lot of problems. It's not what I'm shooting for, but I've been trying to bring nutrients down to deal with some of the issues I've been having. And this green encrusting, there we go, right behind that blue green chromis, that green encrusting money, it also STN'd. We got a few patches on there, so I'm gonna leave it. It should recolonize. It'll be a slow process, but it's gonna be okay. But we had a couple of corals that had some little stressors, but all in all, everything's doing good, right? Like maybe I sound negative sometimes when I point out the bad stuff, but really that's what I focus on. Those are my canaries in the coal mine. That's telling me what's going right and what's going wrong. Everything else in here is really doing pretty good. The rest of the monies, they look happy. They look healthy. The silver goddess, it's pretty well recovered. Lots of polyp extension. Everything is doing great up here, except for a couple of corals that are stressed from low nitrates and phosphates. It's a weird world we live in where we work so hard to get nutrients down. And this time it's worked. Most of the algae is off of this rock. This rock was completely covered and now it's mostly gone. So now it's opening up. I can see the coral. They're doing good, nothing stressed. This was a real troublesome spot. That's a big success. My acro section at the top of the tank hasn't really cared. It's done great. And in fact, I've been seeing more growth. 
The algae is mostly gone, so it's not hitting the acros. It's not trying to overgrow the acros like it used to be. Yes, there's still some there, but now I'm seeing lots of growth and happy coral. This is what I want. Things are going the right way. I'm stoked. I've got two sections of brains up here, and these are doing really well. These guys are highlight, high flow, love and life, no issues at all. The lower section, a little less light, a little less flow, except for this green one. This green one gets pounded by light and flow. It's in the right spot for that coral. It's got that moon brain look to it. This thing is fantastic. It always does good. It never dies back, but it's just such a slow grower. But all the rest of them are doing great. Even the platy gyra, that's in relatively low light. And I've even got branching Fabia right there that's doing good. This is a piece that was getting covered in algae. I was scared we might have problems with it. But yeah, now it's happy. Now it's healthy. We're going in the right direction. This kind of red and blue pectinia, it does fantastic. It's in highlight, high flow, and it just always does great in this spot. It hasn't really given me sweeper issues. Pectinia are so so underrated. This thing has been a fantastic coral. I love it. Speaking of pectinia, we have Space Invader kind of sitting here on the edge of the reef and it just does great. High light, high flow, and it's happy. It doesn't care. It just grows and it's a little bit of a slow grower, but the coral's great. And you can see the money is growing right up next to it. No crazy stinging issues. In my opinion, the stinging issues with pectinia are way overblown. My bubble section's doing pretty darn good. This big green one was open earlier. Now he's decided to close up. Wouldn't be surprising if it has to do with the halides on. Remember, these guys haven't seen halides in a couple of weeks. It's been a temperature issue. But the pearls have been doing well. This little guy's pulled in. And my little head of green, it's gone. That's the one I sent to Jake to hold on to. You know, I don't like keeping all my eggs in one basket. Now there's a piece in Jake's tank. It's kind of an insurance policy for the future. Not that they're real fraggable, but you know, it's just the right thing to do. Plus, trading corals is one of the most fun things I can think of personally to do. Overall, I'm really happy with the way the tank's going algae is significantly declined. But I'm at the point where I'm almost thinking I'm gonna have to start dosing nitrates. I've got corals struggling because I don't have enough nitrates, phosphates in the tank. But I'm at the weird point where I'm zero nitrates, zero phosphates, but still have algae in the tank. So it's gonna be a balancing issue for the time being. I'm playing with lighting, turning halides on and off to deal with temperature issues because I don't have AC this year. That's going to stress the coral, the changes in light, heat, everything, but it's what I have to work with personally. So we're going to work with it. We're going to make it happen. We'll pay extra attention to the tank and do it right. But overall, I think the tank's looking great. And I keep growing coral out of control, which means I'll be fragging more coral and I've decided I'm just gonna give it all away. I'm gonna give it to you guys as deals at Weekend at the Wholesaler. So if you want some of my coral, it'll be available at Weekend at the Wholesaler. It'll be just like the Hydro Space stuff. You spend a small amount of money and you'll get a free frag, something like that. That's the goal. So if you're interested in my coral or you wanna to come to Weekend at the Wholesaler, information's in the description below or follow Mile High Reefers on Facebook. That's where I'll put all the weekend of the wholesaler dates. It'll be the easiest way to follow it. So come down to weekend at the wholesaler on July 3rd between 11 and five and pick up your free bottle of Hydrospaces PNS Pro Bio. And I'll, for quite a while, I'll be giving stuff away until I run out of things to give away. So thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at Weekend at the Wholesalers.